everyone welcome back to my channel I'm Farah and today's the start of a new vlog <laughs> it's the beginning of May as I'm filming this and I just wanted to introduce the vlog and talk a little bit about some of the books that I will be reading throughout this vlog and um, I between vlogs I finished A Handmaid's Tale which was just amazing I'm not gonna get into it too much because I'm already done reading it and it'll be in my wrap-up but this book, if any of you have read it, you'll know what I'm saying, but this book was so disturbing and it was so powerful. Um, one of the things I just wanna point out that stood out so much to me was the narration style. This was a, a narration style that I had to get used to because she writes in the present tense for most of the book as um, we're going through what's happening now, but then she'll switch to the past tense when she's doing her flashbacks. And um, as you sort of go on through the novel and you get towards the end, you can feel sort of the psychological unraveling that goes through with her and just her hopelessness and her desperation in these really difficult situations. So I thought that, that the writing was done really, really well. It was really descriptive. You could really picture where you were in each part of this book. And I, I was really impressed by it. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I'll get into it a little bit more in my um, reading wrap up for April. I'm including it in April. I just finished it on May 1st, but it's going in April because I need more books to fill that month. <laughs> but it was really good. I'm glad that I finished it. So for this vlog, I have a couple books that I am going to be starting and I'm gonna try really, really hard to read one book at a time. Um, that's something that I do struggle with. I sometimes pick up and put down a lot of different books at once and it takes me a really long time to get through them. But I am trying to be more relaxed about reading, more mindful about reading, and not worry so much about finishing so much within a month. And I, I'm still on the slower end of the reading scale, so like so much for me it would be six books, whereas for someone else it might be more like ten. So I did start listening to The Night Circus by Aaron Morgan Stern on audio. And that book was going really well. It was just so descriptive that I didn't, I couldn't pay attention to it enough as audio. So I abandoned that and I'm going to just physically read that one because I own it. So I have the copy. I also picked up a book called Crossings, how, how road ecology has shaped, oh, I can't think of the exact subtitle right now, but I'll put a picture here. And I started reading that in preparation for a book club that I just joined, but I'm not gonna have the book anywhere near finished by the time the meeting happens. So I'm just going to kind of put that aside for a, few, a little bit until I get through some of the other ones I already started. So a random book that I decided to pick out from my shelves is this one, and it's called The Girl Who Fell From the Sky by Heidi Duro. 
and this book my sister gave me a couple years ago it's just been sitting on my shelf for a while it's a signed copy so she must have met the author at um, uh, a bookstore where she used to live and this book's really good as well too I also started this on audio it's pretty good on audio but again I, I don't know what's happening to me with audiobooks because lately I just cannot pay attention to them and I think <laughs> I know that the biggest problem that I have is that I listen to it while I'm trying to work and in the past that's been okay um, I can usually work and listen but just lately I don't know what it is but I just cannot focus on the audiobooks and I probably shouldn't be listening to them while I'm working because while I'm working the work that I'm doing is taking up mental real estate so I have I've kind of put my foot down with myself and just said, I'm not gonna listen to audiobooks while I'm working anymore. I, pr I shouldn't do it, so I'm gonna stop. So that kind of leaves me with um, a big gap in my reading because I did rely heavily on audiobooks to get stuff done. So I am physically reading this. This is the one I'm actively gonna read and finish and just read this until I finish. But this book is really interesting. A couple months ago, I read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, which blew me away. One of my favorite books of the year. And in this book, it's kind of reminding me of that because this book tells the story of this young girl. She's about eight years old when the novel starts. So she is a biracial child, very light skinned, and she has blue eyes. So one of the themes in The Bluest Eye was our main character, Pacola, wishing that she was lighter skinned and wishing she had blue eyes. So it's interesting because now we're getting that character in here. And it's just a story about what she goes through as a young black child her a, a horrifically tragic thing happens to her mom and her siblings we don't know the details yet it's starting to unravel but she goes to live with her black grandmother her father's mother and her aunt and um it's kind of the first time that she's immersed in her black culture and she the, the kids are not nice to her some of the black kids, they just treat her really mean. They, she's not black enough to them. And then some of the white kids are just weird with her too. So it's kind of her perception of what's going on. Uh, but we're following a few different storylines as well. And it's just it's sucking me in. It's such a quick pace. The chapters are really short and I'm really enjoying it so far. So that is um, The Girl Who Fell From the Sky. Really enjoying this. So that's all I'm going to start out with um, as I get through that book, hopefully pretty quickly, then I'll move on to the next book that I'm thinking about picking up. I did also try Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman as audio. And it, again, I think I'm just finding that sci-fi and fantasy are just, they, they don't work for me on audio. I have to physically read them. That's where I, I absorb the most information. So those are just some of the books I have going right now. We'll see what happens and what I pick up and I will check in with you guys soon.
it's another morning, a Monday morning, reading on the porch. And I'm still working on The Girl Who Fell From the Sky. Uh, my reading is going very slow this month. Um, just don't have a lot of time this time of year. So we'll see how far we can go in this vlog. But it's a gorgeous, beautiful morning. It's so warm. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. And I just like to spend these mornings on the porch. Like a, I have a good half hour or so before I have to sign into work. And it's just so relaxing to start the day like this. Um, there's birds everywhere. They're all mating and nesting. There's a nest up there somewhere. And I just love it. I did a little meditation actually before I started reading. And um, also working on the New Testament in the Bible for my 100 greatest books of all time. And I'm reading it along with the Bible recap just to get that perspective and yeah it's going well it's it's um you know I do just like to take into account that these are ancient texts that have been translated many many times based off of oral history that was passed along for hundreds of years so I do like to take that approach when I read the Bible and just try to find meaning in it that resonates with me so yeah, more on that eventually when I finish, but this is, it's just an interesting perspective. This is a, this Bible recap is a very, um, Christian, obviously devout, full of faith person that's writing this. So I'm hearing what her sort of interpretations of each passage is. And I'm sure she has a team of people that help her, but yeah, it's interesting. I do really like the book of John so far. The New Testament itself is so much nicer to read than the old testament but um yeah it's it's just fun to hear all these stories that i kind of knew about just to you know find their place in my memory and you know go from there this book is also really good um this is quite a mystery actually though we've got a mystery um the girl the main character in this book who i was telling you about previously her the tragic accident in her family is that her mother, her baby sister, and her little brother fell from a rooftop. All, all of them fell. She was the only one that survived. So the mystery is trying to figure out, did the mother do it to them? Or was it foul play? And we're at a part in the book where one of the characters finds the mother's journal from before she died. And she's reading it. And you can see how the mother's um, mental health is starting to unwind a little bit so it's it's really good very short chapters very easy to read i wouldn't say that the prose is like you know amazing or anything but it's really enjoyable it's a pretty short book it's a multi pov type of book so we have our main character who's written in the eye the first person point of view rachel the young girl who's probably around 13 now and it's a very innocent look on what's going on the language just is it really feels like you're reading a younger person's perspective and then you get some adult perspectives as well and they're all told in the third person point of view there's another kid in the book as well who kind of may know what's going on and i just like how it's all unfolding i think it's really nicely written so yeah really enjoying this so far oh my gosh you guys i just needed to come on here real quickly and show you we can actually see the northern lights from our house tonight and I know that there's no way it's gonna come up on camera very well, but it looks so cool. It's like green and purple, and it's streaking all across the sky. This has been one of those things in my life that I have just hoped that one day I could see. I thought I would have to go to, you know, Sweden or something to see them, but we are actually seeing them here in upstate New York tonight. So it's really cool. This is what it looks like. Oh my goodness. This is so cool. Wow. Can you see that moving? A little bit. Oh my gosh, they're so, oh, wow. Oh my gosh.
All right, guys, I am back to wrap up the vlog. It is, what is it today? May 18th, Saturday morning. It's around eight o'clock and we got a whole day full of Little League today. So I just wanted to film this quick little outro so that I can edit the video and get it posted in a reasonable amount of time. But it's been quite a while since I started the vlog and I honestly have only finished one book. So I am definitely in a little bit of a booktube slump, I would say. It's been going on for a few months. Um, I just have not felt, it's not like from a lack of interest in wanting to make videos or read or anything like that. It's more of like a, a feeling where I just feel like I don't have time to put into this hobby, which is sad because I really enjoy it, but I've been a little commiserating a little bit with my booktube buddy, Daniel, and so I'm glad I'm not alone, and I know there's probably a lot more of you that kind of feel this way from time to time, but yeah, I just, I haven't felt inspired to make many videos. Um, you'll, you have seen me filming late at night, usually, in front of my computer screen with the fireplace, um, just because I've I found that that's really the only time I've had to kind of just make videos and everything. So I guess we'll just see what happens. I might take a little bit of a break for the summer. So I had the most amazing experience in the beginning of the week in seeing the Northern Lights for the first time. Actually, it might not be the first time. I think I have this memory of uh, seeing them maybe when I was young and I looked it up and we did get the Northern Lights here in New York State uh, back in 1989. So I would have been around 10 at the time. And I, I remember it, even though I asked my mom and she's like, I don't know. <laughs> I remember it, maybe it was a dream, but it could be real. So, but this time I happened to see a group text with my mom and my brother who were posting pictures and they were seeing the Northern Lights. I had no idea it was going on before that. So it was, it was like 10 30 at night, I ran outside and I could see them with my eyes. I could see them up in the sky and it was amazing. So I ran back inside. My husband was asleep because he works really early but I dragged my daughters out of bed and they came out and looked at it. And my older daughter, she stayed out with me for almost an hour and we took pictures and video and it was so cool. Seeing the Northern Lights is one of those things that had been on my bucket list. It had been something that I had wished for and dreamed to be able to do someday. And I was thinking like, oh, well, you know, I have to plan a trip to Iceland or Sweden or Alaska or even up upper Maine. You can kind of see them sometimes, Canada but I got to see them and it was so cool. So I'm really glad I got to experience that. Um, let me know if any of you guys were able to see them. A lot of people in our area, they were so disappointed because nobody knew about it. And then the couple days afterwards, we could see it on Sunday night, just a tiny bit again, but it was nothing like Friday night. So that was a real highlight of my month for me. Just wanted to share that. And so the book that I did end up finishing is The Girl Who Fell From the Sky by Heidi Dur Duro. And this ended up being okay. It ended up being pretty good. This was a book that I owned. And um, it was an interesting look at the, what it might feel like to be biracial and to go through school and to um, be a young black child. She, her mother was white from Denmark and her dad was African, African American from the US. And so she was a light skinned biracial girl with blue eyes and people really focused on her eyes a lot and they were just like you're the most beautiful blue eyes you know it's, it was just unusual for them to see so she got a lot of attention for her natural beauty but at the same time she also got a lot of just comments like are you black or are you white and the black kids you know bullied her a lot and they didn't they were saying you know why are you acting so white and you know they so it was a lot of identity of seeing her go through that in school the expectations when she went to live with her black grandmother and how she was supposed to act. She even felt self-conscious in church where she felt like her voice didn't have the same amount of soul that some of her other relatives had. Um, you see how she's treated by the boys. They're all obsessed, kind of like saying she's exotic and everything. So that was an interesting perspective. The, the mystery going on though was pretty interesting as well. And the tragedy that happened, and you know this right in the beginning, is that her mom, her brother her baby sister and her they all fell off of a roof and she's the only one that survived so that's the other part of the book where we're going through to try to figure out what happened because there were no witnesses nobody really knows what happened so it was it was a very interesting unraveling it was short chapters we're getting different points of views um, our main character is told in the first person point of view and then the other characters are told in the third person 
I thought that the writing was really good. Um, I enjoyed the writing a bit. I thought she captured the essence of childlike innocence and explaining her perspective going through the grief and the identity and things like that. I did see some critiques on Goodreads from people that are biracial that didn't really like it. So that's always something I like to check out and take into consideration if I recommend a book or not. So I did enjoy it. Um, it wasn't like, you know, didn't blow me away or anything, but I think it, it was pretty good. If you find it somewhere and you want to give it a try, it's pretty short. So I recommend that. So, um, I also have been in a little bit of an audiobook slump as well, so that's why it's taking me a long time to get through different books. So I took an audiobook break for a lot of April and pretty much most of May. I have a, a physical copy of, where is it? One moment. So I also took a little bit of an audiobook break. I just cannot pay attention to audiobooks lately, but I did. I have this book. It's called um, The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. This is book two in the High Republic series that just came out, I think, back in 2021. It's just a new sort of, um, it's a new bunch of books that focus about two to three hundred years before The Phantom Menace. So we have all new characters to me. Some of the OGs are in there. We have a little Yoda in there, which I love, but this is book two. I read book one, which is called Light of the Jedi, last summer, and it took me a while to get into it because there was a lot of new characters and I was trying to figure out what they all looked like. And I do find that looking at fan art sometimes really helps me. And I did it after I read the book. So I'm like, oh, I thought that guy was a human, but he's not. So it was interesting. That was interesting. But now that I kind of have a good idea of who the characters are, um, it's been really fun. The audiobook for this is so, so good. It's narrated by Mark Thompson, I believe is his name. And it's not his first rodeo, <laughs> you can tell. I think he actually narrated the Thrawn trilogy, if I'm remembering correctly, and a few other, um, a lot of other Star Wars books. But it's a full dramatization. So you're getting sound effects, you're getting music, you're getting, uh, his acting is incredible. It's really, really good for, I, I mean, he's like knows what's coming up and he's acting with such emotion and he's like breathing you know there's a scene where someone gets shot and he's like breathing the way that you would breathe if you're in pain i am so impressed i am so impressed by this audiobook it's really good and then you get musical scores too some of the john williams musical scores like you're hearing luke skywalker's theme throughout certain parts of the book and you're getting droid noises and ship engines and lightsaber noises. This is so much fun. It has completely pulled me out of my audiobook slump. I love it. I still, I'm not really listening to it while I'm working, but it's so good. I'm really, really enjoying it. So I'm a little ways through that. You can see there. And then, so hopefully I'll keep going with that. I'm about to lose the, I'm about to lose the audiobook in a couple of days though from the library and two people are waiting. So I don't know. I, I'm going to try to see Fun fact, if you live in New York State, you can get a free New York library card and you can use it for Libby. Pretty sure, I'm gonna try it. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get the audiobook back for that. And then lastly, I'm just reading on my Kindle, still going forward with Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And this is pretty good too. I mean, it's, it's really good. It's fun, it's light, it's just what I need right now. And I think part of the struggles with the Read What You Own Challenge is, is that I don't have a ton of genres to pick from. It's a lot of general fiction and classics. So I'm missing stuff like my urban fantasies, um, more science fiction, more regular fantasy. So I'm just slogging through. I'm gonna do a video, a check-in for the Read What You Own Challenge pretty soon, hopefully. But yeah, that is my quick wrap up. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. Ah, hopefully the book two burnout will start to fizzle a little bit. I think I just, I put a lot of pressure on myself to keep up with everybody else's videos. And I know that it's just not possible. It's not possible for all of us to watch all of each other's videos all the time. And that's okay. You know, it's okay. So that people pleaser, you know, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you have a great weekend and I will see you soon. Take care everybody. And thank you for watching.